Now, I have criticisms of this film that I'll talk about. But after I watched it, I discovered something. I couldn't stop thinking about it. If it wasn't for some poor acting, some general things that haven't aged well, and some anticlimactic stagings of the kills, this may be even higher and have a perfect score. But the way it holds back just enough off camera to make you more scared when you can't see Michael is cinematic genius. It is an experience. Is it maybe a little overrated in the grand scheme of things? Maybe. It may have birthed the slasher genre and invented a lot of the tropes we know, which isn't a good thing. They are annoying cliches in today's time and they're all here because it kind of started. Ultimately, I didn't really think it was the entirety of the sum of its parts, but it actually it is. After some reflection and seeing the sequels, because it stays with you. Now, I don't know that I call it the best horror film ever made, but I don't know if I could argue for something else either other than maybe the thing. The execution of the slasher portion rob of much of the tension payoff and the story is nothing really to write home about because it's very simple here but maybe that's why it's so effective but again those kills are so haphazardly executed with the exception of one which ultimately cheapens the fantastic buildup and robs the near perfectly crafted tension throughout the film. Seriously, this is a phenomenal crafting of psychological horror staging and tension building through the visual language of the camera. Massive work of direction, cinematography, and scoring. Everything about it is haunting. The camera work alone is breathtakingly perfect in establishing a dark, atmospheric sense of dread throughout that makes you think that Michael could be lurking around every corner as the camera itself. You never know when he's gonna pop up, and for that, it gets the score that it does overall. And Donald Pleasant's giving his all with that evil speech, that monologue that he has, is just perfection. But some cheesy acting, lack of actual characters outside of Loomis, Terrible and unintentionally funny kills really drag this down for being a near masterpiece. Cliffhanger endings like this work for shock value in the moment, but sometimes they can be a little hollow in the examination. In reality, it's a little shallow, lazy storytelling tactic from horror films that it expects us to buy that Michael could be anywhere when he's been mostly human the whole movie. It doesn't quite land as the twist ending they'd hoped for, but it still gets you in the moment because it is terrifying and you do know what comes later. Because of that consistently strong direction score, it's still chilling. And now I've waved through four to five timelines after this masterpiece that people definitely overpraise without a doubt, but all these different continuities and none of them come close to this one. Maybe it is a horror masterpiece. Maybe it does deserve the credit because of everything it established. I'm conflicted within myself. This is undoubtedly a work of art and it's a good movie. Some of the execution may not have aged well, but what has from back then? Not everything ages perfectly because it's a part of the time. So I do say it is a masterpiece in its own way. Horror overall just isn't my cup of tea, but I respect it so much. So I finished this with a feeling of a sense of relief, the tension is over. But this film has and will stay with me for a while. Maybe it's not overrated then. Maybe that's its effect. Maybe it is everything they say. Maybe the shape is just that haunting. I give Halloween 4.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks so much for tuning in to all of these reviews. It's been fun kind of going through them after I rewatched them last year. I'm going to dive into some other horror films this year I can review next year for Halloween. Smash that like button. Please subscribe. Follow me on Letterboxd. Happy Halloween. And remember, always look for the good.